Welcome to the Building Great Lives podcast, a podcast about real life, real issues, and finding real answers to life's most difficult questions. And now your host, Trent Gillum. Greetings, everyone. Trent here. Welcome to episode number 92 of the podcast. I'm glad you've joined the Building Great Lives journey. Before we get started, as always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our monthly ministry partners and to you, the listener. You make this ministry possible, and I'm excited to have you on the Building Great Lives team here at the Building Great Lives podcast. It's our desire to help people from around the world grow, heal, discover, and fulfill their unique purpose. Thank you for sharing these episodes. We're praying these messages of hope reach every possible person in every possible nation. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to win the private battle within. When we think of spiritual warfare, it's easy to think of it as the enemy coming against the church. And while that's true, it's much deeper than that. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The church as a whole will prevail. And while the enemy does wage war against the church, the enemy spends most of his time not waging war against the whole body, but against individuals. We face individual battles. Our warfare is made up of individual battles and struggles. The book of Revelation warns the inhabitants of the earth that Satan has come down with great wrath. But we do not have to be dismayed. John also declared, we have overcoming power through the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Paul declared in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God has given us a promise that he is going to help us and give us the overcoming power that we need. God is going to give us victory. Every believer on earth faces their own private battles. There are wars that are fought on the battlefield of the mind. Private struggles known only to you. Emotional wars that often bring a burden you don't feel comfortable sharing with anyone else. These private battles can, at times, leave us feeling overwhelmed. They are lonely wars. They are the wars that only you and Jesus know about. We often hide what we're going through and present only what we want people to see. But God sees our heart and God knows our struggle. And he's not looking to reject us. He's looking to help us get through every battle. David won victories over all of Israel's greatest enemies. David defeated a bear and a lion. David defeated a giant named Goliath. David defeated the Philistines. David defeated the Gershites and the Gerzerites and the Amalekites. David won a battle against the Moabites. David defeated the Syrians. He had many victories. Historians and theologians alike boldly proclaim how David never lost a battle against the nations that rose up against Israel. However, In the midst of all these great victories, David was facing other battles, battles that others could not see, private battles, battles within himself. And despite being undefeated in outward victories, David didn't win every battle within. 
Bible tells us that after restoring the nation of Israel to peace through great military power, his personal life remained embattled. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 2, And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still in Jerusalem. And it came to pass on the evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look on. David committed adultery with Bathsheba and then ordered the murder of her husband, all in an attempt to cover up his deeds. Through the prophet Nathan, God rebuked David and pronounced judgment, and David repented. When men saw David, they saw him as a strong warrior king that had many victories. Yet in private, when he should have been away at war, he tarried in Jerusalem and lost a private battle on a balcony. Everyone, including born-again believers, face their own private struggles. You never know the struggle hiding just behind a handshake or smile. You never know the struggle hiding just behind someone saying, I'm good. The struggle's known only to them. People rarely see our inner struggles, and we hide them behind our suits and ties and our nice church attire. On the outside, all appears well, but on the inside, we feel like we're dying. These wars are fought on the battlefield of the mind. They are often battles that we are uncomfortable sharing with anyone. Struggles with faith. Struggles with questions. Struggles with doubt. Struggles with grief. These private battles often leave us feeling lonely and overwhelmed, even questioning our relationship with God, wondering, why do I still feel this way? Why am I still struggling? Why do I still have questions? Why do I still hurt? Why, why, why? And we condemn ourselves when in reality, it's just part of, of the human experience. Listener, you must stop condemning yourselves over the private battles that you face. It's common to every man. When you look at your fellow believers and you see the good in their lives, you also need to know that they also battle private struggles known only to them, struggles that they would be afraid to admit because they would not want anybody questioning their Christianity. And I'm not talking about sin David did lose the battle and fell into sin, and it can certainly lead to that in us. But I'm talking about those struggles with fear and anxieties, doubts and pains and circumstances that create questions in our mind, those private battles that all of us face, things that we all endure, but we would never want anybody to know that side of us. We only want people to know the victories. We only want people to know the good times. And when they ask, how are you doing? Our response is, I'm doing just fine. When in reality, we're all dealing with private battles within. But God is saying it's time to stop condemning yourself. You are powerful. You are anointed. And God has called you to great victory. David wasn't the only one who faced these kinds of battles. The Bible says in the New Testament that there was a man named Thomas, and he's known as Doubting Thomas. And I certainly think that's misunderstood. There were two sides to Thomas. There was a time that Jesus had left Bethany because certain Jews sought to stone him. 
And while he was away, word had come that Lazarus has died. And when Thomas hears the news, he makes the bold proclamation in John chapter 11 and verse 16. Then said Thomas unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. This is amazing to me. This is not a man that is a doubter. This is words of a loyal friend. He's saying, I am committed to. I'm ready to go back to Bethany to be with Mary and Martha, to be there for them in this time of grief, even if it costs me my life. What a boldness in Thomas. This shows a very strong side, a characteristic we don't often mention when we talk about Thomas. Yet his needing proof of Jesus' resurrection has caused us to label him Doubting Thomas. I find the contrast between Thomas being willing to die to be with his friends and being a doubter of Jesus' resurrection, extreme opposites. One of boldness and one of fear, hiding in a room questioning whether Jesus was really resurrected. I want you to notice something very interesting about Thomas His name means twin or two. And although probable, there's not any biblical or historical accounts of him having a twin brother or sister. But it becomes clear as names in the Bible meant something about their character. And so we find the man named Thomas, that means twin or two, struggles with two extremes. One of boldness and one of doubt. Yet at the same time, he was chosen by Jesus, a disciple that not only witnessed, but participated in the mighty ministry of Jesus. God did not reject or condemn Thomas for his struggles. God will not condemn or reject you because of yours. God used Thomas. God revealed to Thomas. And God wants to reveal to you. God wants to equip you for victory over those battles you face in your mind. Those battles that make you want to give up. Those thoughts of quitting. God wants to equip you to overcome them. Be encouraged. God desires to empower you to overcome every single private battle you face. God desires to equip you with the spiritual, emotional, and mental tools so that you can win every battle. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 11, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He continued in verse 13 through 18, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. God gives us the tools needed to overcome every battle. God has equipped us with all of the necessary tools to overcome every battle in our lives. Let's take a few moments and look at the whole armor of God. The Bible says that we are to gird about our loins with truth. The word loins here is the word waste. Truth is very important. Truth is what sets us free. 
Satan is, according to John 8, 44, a liar. But the believer who stands on truth will defeat him. The girdle held the outer parts of the armor together. Truth will hold your life together during the battle. So don't fall prey to the lies that Satan says about you. You are not what the enemy says. You are what God says. So you need to have a strong belief in truth so that you do not fall to the enemy's lies. We need to take on the breastplate of righteousness. This piece of armor made of metal plates or chains covered the body from neck to the waist, both front and back, and it symbolizes the believer's righteousness in Jesus. It's intended to protect the heart of the embattled believer. We need our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The Roman soldier wore sandals with what they called hobnails in the soles. In modern terms, it would be like the cleats worn by athletes so that they don't lose their footing. So the Roman soldiers wore these for better footing during battle. And we should have peace that brings us strong standing on the foundations of God. And we should take on the shield of faith that is strong belief in, trust, and confidence in God. The shield was large, usually about four feet to two feet, made of wood covered with tough leather. And the soldier held it before him. It protected him from spears, arrows, and fiery darts. The edges of the Roman shield was made so that they would interlock with each other when they were in a line, and they could then push back against the enemy, not as one, but as all, acting like a strong wall of resistance against the enemy. This suggest that we are not in the battle alone. The faith mentioned here is not the saving faith that we've got when we repented, was baptized in his name, and were filled with the Holy Ghost, but rather a living faith, a trust in the promises and the power of God. We should take on the helmet of salvation, the protection for the mind, the head, the source of understanding and authority. Satan wants to attack our minds. As we grow in grace and knowledge, we will learn to use the things of God to more easily overcome. It's intended to protect the mind of the embattled believer. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, When Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, he used the sword of the Spirit to defeat the enemy. Three times Jesus said, it is written. The word of God is a powerful weapon we can rely on when we are embattled in our mind. And prayer, more specifically, praying in the Spirit. Prayer is is our connect point with God. We must make sure that we are spending time praying and breaking through in the Spirit. And finally, watching. I didn't want to leave it out because it's very important. You can have the whole armor of God, but you need to watch. That word means stay alert. The enemy will attack you, and you must recognize it. The sooner you recognize that it's the enemy, You can put him in his right place. You can rebuke the enemy and he will flee from you. But until you recognize that it's his attack, you will always struggle with wondering, is there something wrong with me? No, it's the enemy that's lying to you. It's the enemy that's accusing you. It's the enemy that's trying to bring you down. But it's God that has equipped you to rise up above all the difficulties and find the victory that you are capable of obtaining. First, you must remember, 
everyone you meet faces private inward struggles, even the most spiritual among us. Second, you must be intentional about your relationship with God. God has called you to victory. And as has become our tradition here at the Building Great Lives podcast, I want to pray for you, listener. I want to pray that God would encourage you and that God would give you the strength to endure this battle. Lord, you see every listener. You know exactly what they're going through. I pray right now by the authority of your word that you would help them rise up above the battle. God, there are things that they are dealing with in their mind. Some are struggling right now. There are some that are ready to give up and they're ready to quit. But God, I pray that you would reach down right now. Let them feel your anointing right where they are. In your great name, we pray. And as always, thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed this episode, tell a friend, maybe text them the link or share it on your social. You can find me on social at Trent Gillum, that's G-I-L-L-I-A-M, on Instagram at Rev Gillum. You can also reach me at Building Great Lives Podcast at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time. Let's keep building. You've been listening to the Building Great Lives podcast, a member of the Real Life Church Network. Join us next time as we dig deeper into life's most challenging questions.